Good evening all uh, members of the public and representatives. Um, I'm Councillor Mickey Lang, Vice Chair of uh, Planning Applications Committee, and I'm standing in on behalf of Chair uh, Councillor Joe Lovelock, who's not who's feeling very poorly. I'm sure we all send her our best wishes. Um, I'll, I'll just read out the, the standard public information. I would like to inform everyone present that this meeting will be recorded and, a broad, and broadcast live on the internet and will be available for repeat viewing on the Council's website. You should be aware that the, council, that the Council is a data controller under the Data Protection Act. Data collected during the webcast will be retained in accordance with the Council's published policy. The seating in the public gallery will not be filmed. Members of the public are only able to speak if they have registered their intention in accordance with council procedure rules. As chair, I have the discretion to adjourn the meeting in the event that there is disorderly conduct from councillors or members of the public in accordance with standing orders 34 and 35. I can also terminate or suspend the webcasting of the meeting in accordance with the webcasting protocol. Thank you. Um, so moving on, part one. Item one, councillors, are we all OK with the minutes? Yeah, OK, OK, well, I'm tonight I'd, I'd wish we would have plenty of eyes and yeses yeah. so that people listening on the webcast know they can read the room then, can't they, so to speak? Uh, any declarations of interest on any of tonight's applications? Nope. All right, moving on. There are no questions from the public or questions from the councillors which is no you sure right okay moving on now we move on to uh potential um sorry potential site visits uh richard yes thank you chair um you could just uh, run through the um, uh, appendix one um uh, 3642 london street yeah, I think um, we I think we'd we'd like an accompanied visit to uh, the Central Club, as it's commonly known. Do you, do we agree, councillors? I think that's important that um, we seem to take a, an interest in this, which we all, all are, of course. Uh, thank you, Chair. Noted. Um, on the appendix to them, previously agreed site visits. Um, a few updates for you. Um, two two one. Uh, 405 Land at uh, Battle Street, the central pool site, just to let you know you agreed an unaccompanied site visit, that your um, your unaccompanied site visit note is in preparation. Yeah, um, I think um, some of the Abbey Ward councillors, Councillor Rowland, you'd like to say a few words on that? Right, thank you, thank you, Chair. In regards to that site, uh, there has been a request from a resident uh, to uh, view the property or, or to view the the uh, site from her property and that had been passed to uh, the planning team I believe so I would request that that opportunity is given to the pack to be able to view that <coughs> to view the site from that location if, if that's agreed by the committee if that's agreed by the committee that's that's fine okay Chair. so, so councillors we agree to note this report and the amendments I've got a couple of other updates, yep. please, Chair. Um, just again on the sort of reserve list there. <clears throat> uh, 221693, you've got uh, Row Court that's um, lined up for the 26th of January member site visit. The other two there, 211714 and 220123, that's the Wokingham Road and Eldon Square sites. Both of those are now being refused by officers under delegated powers. Thank you. Okay, that's noted by councillors. Yeah, row court noted. Okay. Right, thank you. Um, moving on, um, planning appeals. I think it's Julie. No, this is me again, oh, Chair. Is it you, Richard? Sorry, yes, sorry. thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, as, as you can see, uh, one new telecoms appeal lodge, that's St Peter's Hill. Um, appeals uh, decided um, on your uh, main agenda pack, you've got. Um, the dismissed appeal Grove Road, Emma Green. Uh, and if you look to your update pack, another dismissed appeal on Pepper Lane. So officers um, very happy with those decisions. Thank you, Chair. As are councillors. Yeah, yeah. Um, OK. Um, everybody's got their update pack, yeah, I take it. I haven't had any. And we've all got access to our glossy brochures. Yeah, OK, well, that's all good. Um, right then, uh, applications for prior approval. 
I've nothing to add to that item, no, Chair. Okay, Thank you. okay. Right then. Um, okay. All okay to move on to part two, yeah? So item seven, let me find my place. Sorry. Sewn <coughs> point and it's uh, Matt to introduce it. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is item seven, page 39 of the main agenda pack. And there's also an update report on page nine of the update pack. Uh, the application relates to Stone Point, which is a large five storey building located within Marketplace. Uh, the site is located within the London Street Marketplace Conservation Area and um, within close proximity to a number of listed buildings. Councillors may recall that the existing building obtained prior approval consent on the permitted development rights for change of use of the upper floors from offices to 144 studio flats last year, uh, and that consent was granted um, on appeal. Uh, the current application proposals seek permission for external works to the existing building, including partial replacement of the existing facades and a series of upward extensions of between one and three storeys. So this will provide 38 additional flats, it includes landscaped residential amenity areas and associated car parking. The application site is allocated for development within the local plan under policy CR14E which outlines that development on the site should be for retail and related uses on ground floor with residential and or offices to the upper floors. Uh, the policy also stipulates a number of criteria that development on the site should meet, which includes reflecting the prevailing height of marketplace and also enhancing the contribution of the site to the conservation area and setting of adjacent listed buildings. As outlined within the main agenda report, officers consider that the application proposals demonstrate a good level of compliance with policy CR14 and the other relevant policies of the local plan. Notably, it is considered that the proposed facade alterations to the existing building are successful in dealing with a number of the negative aspects of its external appearance. And the proposals are considered to represent a positive improvement to the building's contribution to the character of marketplace and similar enhancements are also identified to the Abbey Square facade of the building. Uh, in overall terms, the proposals are considered to result in an enhancement of the site um, and its impact upon the setting of the conservation area and also those of the closest listed buildings to the site. Uh, a number of obligations are proposed to be secured by way of a Section 106 legal agreement and this includes a policy compliant level of affordable housing uh, accordingly, the officer recommendation is to grant full planning permission subject to the recommended conditions and the obligations set out in the main agenda and the update report. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Matt. Um, councillors? Councillor Moore. <coughs> thank you, Chair. Um, I completely approve of these proposals. I think they, uh, they look visually more appealing than we have today, and I'm really, really pleased to see 30% affordable housing. 29% um, directly and 1% extra payments. So it's really nice to see that straight off the bat. So not much more to say. Councillor Rowland. Thank you, Chair. And um, yes, um, the the uh, proposal um, has got before us uh, a number of of um, good points um, that that I think uh, it should be commended for. Um, firstly, and I think one of the most important things, something that I do bang on about from time to time, is the fact that we're reusing a building here. Um, it's a really, really, really important thing. Uh, embodied carbon uh, is a huge, a huge issue, and especially in the foundations of buildings, so in the structure and the foundations, uh, that's where most of our embodied carbon is. So when we're continuing to reuse those, uh, which we always like to see, um, we are we are saving a tremendous amount. Uh, renovation and reuse projects can save between 50 to 75%. I pulled that down off the internet today of the embodied carbon emissions compared to constructing a new building. So this is really, really commendable. Um, and and I, I, I want to be sure and, and, and point that out. Um, the issues, the issues are in large part, and I think we can tell by the fact that we've gotten a, a big, huge, glossy uh, presentation here, um, at least on, on this site, we're discussing also the visuals and the impact on the conservation area. 
the visuals uh, for the 38 flats that this particular um, this particular item is bringing up, but also uh, also on the fact of the way those are treated in the reflection in the conservation area. Uh, the the breaking up of the facade is is as noted by the officer an extremely welcome uh, improvement for the marketplace uh, conservation area views and the viewpoints uh, that were that were shown were very 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 helpful um, I have to find um, the idea although I won't call it innovative of returning to the idea of burgage plots because burgage plots have been around for over 700 years. Uh, but we have rediscovered them and we have we are paying attention to the way these plots were originally broken up a little bit more so we get an idea and a sense of the history of the burgage plots by breaking these up and making this actually look like four separate buildings. So once again, that's very commendable. It reduces the horizontal impact of the current building that we do have that that does not present the best light for marketplace. Um, the materials are extremely, extremely important in this and it's hard to say I can't tell from the the nice glossy here whether we're talking about slips whether we're talking about full bricks exactly how the dark buff brick and the light buff brick and all of that works and that kind of that 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 is something that I think is very important and something that I might like to see and understand in the future um, I also um, um, feel that the to be honest that the color breakup uh, may not be exactly right uh, just in viewing from that whole marketplace whether that gray building there on the end uh, is actually the right answer in combination of using of using brick right now we have a gray kind of structure and I'm concerned that using so much gray brick uh, on that end lot We'll have that building somewhat looking like it does now in in a few years with materials and all of that. So it's almost like, and I don't, I know that we have it conditioned to uh, possibly see those materials come forward uh, again at a later point. The the quality, the color, the color layout, which I do disagree about. There there's no real light gray in marketplace per se. There's plenty of tan and red. Red brick is is Redding's strong point. Um, I, I would just kind of question that. I, I do agree with not putting red brick next to the beautiful old bank building because we are going to be dealing with a fundamentally uh, different brick to what that that beautiful old building is. So I wouldn't ever put something down near there. But uh, there's just something about it that is so there, but not 100% in, in my mind. So so that's one other one point I'd like to make. Um, finally, Chair, um, I have an issue which kind of relates on into item eight, which I know that we're not discussing now, but it does have to do with the refuse uh, that is laid out on the lower the lower ground level uh, for not only the thirty eight flats of point of item seven here, but also the other one hundred and forty four flats that make up the the bulk of the rest of the building and all of those are serviced collectively on that that lower ground structure um, it was very very hard to tell without blowing it up uh, the exact layout of what we have with the with the refuse uh, collections right there and right now we've got a real problem in the town center we're we're talking about again in item eight we're talking about a commercial to resi conversion. We have domestic waste showing up in our town center that are already appearing from uh, commercial to resi conversions. And it's something that has become a real problem. And I don't want to see it be a problem here. Uh, I question very much whether the two, which have to go into one because this is, the rubbish plan for both um, has really been properly considered because the way I looked at the numbers, um, the provision of waste leaves us at somewhat short because the provision of waste still says 138 flats. And we are now dealing with 100 and excuse me, we've got 144 plus, yeah, 182. And so 
I the numbers that I have put together and the way that I've broken broken that down is that we are dealing with for the same number of homes 2740 liters per week of recycling and the same for rubbish um, that were short that we would be offering other, any other home in in the town and um, so I would really question that I don't know whether it's up to date and furthermore we've got it we've got a real issue here we're trying to we're, we're talking about a new building here really with these 38 flats we need this to be the best and we need to be prepared for the future we're already in a future situation that there is no provision for on this plan whatsoever because we are food recycling and i'm trying to struggle to see a how their commercial waste removal which does not take care of food recycling how that's going to fit in so i've got a question as to how we're going to be food recycling because we are asking that of every resident in town as we bring on new blocks and flats there's nothing about that. There's also nothing about the fact that that there this will not probably be a long term tenancy. There will be revolving tenants in these buildings. We know that probably even more so with the ones in item eight with the 144 studios that there may be a higher churn. When you have a higher churn, you have excessive quantities of move in and move out rubbish. And I do not I do not, I know that this will be laid out later. I don't see the capacity here and I don't see the space and I, I'm not, I'm not ultimately happy that this isn't going to cause us a problem in the future. So Chair, that's a big issue with me. And um, yeah, I, we might have the prerogative of asking about some details on that, but, and I might come back, but that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, and we, we we certainly will, and the relationship between items seven and eight are undeniable. That that you know they're in, intertwined at every level. So um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go through the councillors, and then I'll, we we we'll go back, and then and, and answer questions like that. I think because we've all got sort of like statements come come questions that people want to. So what I'll do is I'll go to Councillor Page next, then I'll come to you, Councillor Hornsby Smith. Councillor Page. Does this work? Oh, this one works. Sorry, Chair. Um, Chair, um, we've got here an application um, for 38 new homes. Um, policy compliant, as Councillor Moore rightly referenced, um, which if taken in splendid isolation um, would be, um, uh, is very good. Um, and uh, uh, the comments that Councillor um, Rowland made, I would agree with. The other element of this application that is also commendable is the recladding um, and the external changes. Um, and we've seen from buildings such as Thames Tower that if the appropriate high quality materials are used, and I've yet to be convinced from this glossy that we are talking high quality materials and I would want to see uh, a, condition, a condition at an appropriate stage that ha brings the materials back to us, not, not glossy photos that, that, that we've seen before and resulting in often cheapskate uh, developments, but this is a location which demands the highest quality materials and I welcome uh, the principle of retaining a building for the reasons that Councillor um, uh, Rowland has said, the embodied carbon uh, involved in demolishing and, uh, uh, and rebuilding um, can be quite horrendous. And as we have seen with developments like Thames Tower, high quality cladding um, can completely transform the nature of a building. And high quality cladding breaking up in the verticality uh, that is shown here again is welcome in principle. Um, so the approach that's been adopted um, in uh, if you just look at the top and the bottom, uh, the contrast is substantial, but it will only be substantial if the quality um, is is right. So that's another thing to be uh, welcomed. What of course is not to be welcomed um, is the fact that we're dealing um, with 144 rabbit hutches um, in the building over which we have no control. 
Um, and that is the deplorable aspect of prior approval. Um, I don't blame developers from exploiting uh, the legacy uh, of Eric Pickles, but the fact is it does not deliver quality accommodation to the standards that we would require. These are substandard flats um, that will be uh, delivered. But again, that is not an issue that is part of this application. The implications uh, of some of it we can come on to uh, in terms of the non-material amendment, <laughs> because basically um, that NMA application is recognition of the substandard nature of the original um, uh, prior approval that was won um, on appeal. Um, so I realise, Chair, that there's a separate meeting going on. Um, should I perhaps pause? Apologies, Councillor Page. Um, well, officers clearly won't have heard a word I said, but that probably doesn't matter. Um, but uh, anyway, I will uh, continue. Um, chair, the so there are good points to this uh, application. As I say, treated in isolation, I, I think we would have little problem if uh, uh, if there weren't the connection with the prior approval um, uh, that we are dealing with later. And Councillor Rowland has highlighted a very valid point about the waste um, and refuse size. For a start, the plan. Um, that we're invited to approve refers to 138 rather than 144 uh, flats. That might in itself be only a minor technical issue. But the fact is uh, that we have the refuse waste uh, from 38 flats also being added to this with no extra space, no extra uh, provision that we can see. Um, we also have the whole issue of food waste recycling, um, which will hopefully, and some of us are lobbying, and both Councillors Roland and I are members of the RE3 board, uh, which is party to lobbying for food waste to be made mandatory across the country in the future. It isn't, it should be. Um, we can see from the success of the food waste rollout in Reading, um, that uh, it plays a major part in increasing recycling. There isn't a private waste contractor in this, I, I'm going to say in the country, but I think certainly in this town that deals with food waste. The food waste from all these flats, the 38 and the 144, will go into the grey landfill bins. That is unacceptable. And if there were um, a move that we could require food waste recycling, where will those extra caddies, where will those extra bins go? There is no space for them as far as I can see in these plans and that needs to be addressed. And to address it after we give consent, um, I would suggest is, uh, well, that's losing our control because the totality of the space available for bins would be signed off if we agree the plans tonight. What we need to be satisfied with is that a total area is earmarked that is adequate to cater for landfill, for recycling and for food waste bins. Um, and I'm not satisfied that we have that information. Our, um, our health, our refuse people were consulted about this application alone, not the totality of the 182 flats, because they will have been told by the planners, this is the planning application for 38 flats. And they will have looked at that in the building and said, probably no problems. Will they have been told, this is what is required for 182? No. Well, if they were, I would want to see how they think this is adequate. Um, and indeed, we have plans that only reference 138 flats, never mind about the 144 that were secured on, um, on appeal. Um, so uh, the management um, of uh, waste, food waste as well, uh, for these flats is a difficult and sensitive issue. This is the largest or this was, and I think still is, the largest single prior approval for residential in the town centre. It was one on appeal on bogus reasons. 
Um, and uh, uh, it really uh, is one that we need to look at very, very carefully um, because the implications are substantial. The reason many other prior approvals haven't been built out is because the developers have looked in more detail and seen quite how difficult they were. And the NMA, which we'll come on to, is proof positive that the original scheme is essentially undeliverable. But anyway, Chair, um, for that reason, I think we need some more information uh, this evening. If that can be provided in detail and to our satisfaction, uh, then fair enough. But we might need uh, to uh, uh, re request further information to a later meeting. Um, but so there's some positive and some negative. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Post, for your detailed um, presentation. And um, yeah, as I said, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to all the comments and questions and then let Matt have um, uh, answer the relevant points. I do as uh, I've got Chair's discretion to, if there's certain questions that could be put to one of the representatives, they'd be happy to answer if one of the questions came up later we could get some of the answers for, the, for these issues tonight um, so if I go on to Councillor Hornsby Smith and then Councillor Emerson thank you chair um, as the other two councillors have, have said there's a lot of positive in in this uh, development I think it is it is a massive improvement on, on what we can see at the moment so in general terms I would be minded to say this is a good application Let's go with it. But I think the the, uh, the concerns that we've got um, about the uh, waste uh, are completely valid. I have an, a separate couple of points that I wanted to raise. Um, on page 75 of the report in section 6.80, it talks about the 20 car parking spaces and the provision of two electric vehicle charging points. Uh, and my concern is that that is I'm not sure whether that complies with current standards or what, but my concern is that you won't be able to buy a petrol car after 2030. So is two electric charging points adequate for the numbers of people that are going to be using that space, the competition for those two electric charging spaces? And I wonder whether there could be a reconsideration of, of, the, of whether that's future proof. I'm not convinced it is. Um, I think two two charging points is is probably inadequate. The second point um, <clears throat> is 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 really a query more than anything else. It's about the pho photovoltaic cells on on the roof uh, in section six point nine two, uh, page seventy eight, um, and it, it's there. It's to, it's talking about the contribution towards um, uh, carbon neutral and and energy reduction and and, and our, our climate emergency and I think that's very welcome however the devil is in the detail and what I would like to know is and we were talking about this in terms of what sort of size are these panels because on my house I would have eight panels to meet my very limited electric needs now 61 for 182 flats or in this case uh, notionally 38, I would like to know what percentage of the energy is of the of the flats that are, that are going to be uh, occupied, what percentage of the energy is likely to be met by these 61 photovoltaic cells? So those 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 are my questions. Um, and if, if there are answers, that's that's great. That's fine. But I have reservations because of that, despite all of the, the very positive uh, facade improvements um, uh, and the detail that, that we probably would, would like to have a little bit more of um, of, of the application. So I'm minded to, to approve it, uh, but also only subject to getting the clarifications and satisfaction on some of those other issues. Thank you, Chair. Hope you're writing all this down, Matt. <laughs> Uh, Councillor Emerson. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I agree with um, the comments made by Councillor Moore in terms of the affordable housing. And as I was reading the report, for me, much of it I was very pleased to see. Um, I think it looks 
very good. Um, I appreciate Councillor Rowland's comments on the materials. I think that can be dealt with by way of condition. I think the refuse stuff does need to be discussed this evening. But the real um, thing that I would like to understand as I was reading through and in my head going tick, 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 was I got to 4.8 and it notes the fire and rescue um, service have signed off on these plans. Yet when I looked at the letter they submitted, it basically says it's not our statutory um, duty to review. Um, all the same, we're happy. Now I've had a look at the plans and I see one lift and one staircase. And I appreciate these aren't the tallest buildings in the town, but they are quite tall. So I would like some reassurance on fire safety, please. Um, you know, it's commonly accepted that two fire escapes are uh, is best practice. I appreciate this is commercial to resi and that makes things a bit more difficult for us. But I think that's a really important um, point to consider this evening and I'd appreciate some reassurance. And I think going forward, it would be helpful to note that in the officer report, because had I not looked at the plans, um, you know, we just read 4.8 as all fine, but actually one stairwell, I think is perhaps not appropriate. Um, I'm not sure how we could amend that, but I would appreciate officer comment on that chair. Thank you, Councillor Emerson. Nobody else indicating, so I'll pass over to you, Matt. Oh, sorry, Councillor Rowland. I'm very sorry, but I realise you're going back to question the officer, and there was something that I had not mentioned too, and it goes back again to that that subground space too. Um, the the cycle store uh, area uh, is allowing for 76 cycles for what would probably be about 220 people living in the area and that that also if that were to increase in line with our uh, with our climate emergency and our initiative to try to get people into sustainable transport that further compounds the the impact of of the space down in the in the subgrounds so if i could just make a note of that i don't really feel like that's sufficient for um a proper building going forward so thank you thank you um matt yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, so there's quite a few points, so I'll try and run through these. Um, the, I think the first point was to do with the... Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Really um, shout. Uh, so to do with the, ref the refuse collection issue was raised. Um, so as set out in the report, the proposal is for a private refuse collection arrangement and there's a, there's a condition on there to secure that strategy. So what the arrangements for that would, would be. Um, it is possible that because it's a private collection, they can obviously do more frequent collections than if it was council. So, um, you know, the buildup of waste would be less frequent if they can do more, more collections than, than would be standard. Um, so that would be stuff that we could look at to secure under that strategy condition. Um, the point about the food caddies um, is noted um, about their collection. Um, so yeah, I, to my knowledge, the food caddy arrangements aren't indicated on the plans in terms of where they are on the store. Um, these are obviously quite small caddies that people store in their individual flat and then bring down to be disposed of. Um, so we would need to identify a location where they could they could be sited. Um, I, I would suggest we, we could secure that by a condition uh, to agree where those food caddies would be be located if those can't be included within the private within the private collection arrangements. Uh, in terms of the, the electric vehicle charging point uh, with the next one, so that the policy uh, requirement is for 10% of spaces to be electric vehicle here. So uh, I think the two would, would be hitting that. In terms of the solar panels, um, I don't have the numbers to hand in terms of the percentage of energy that would be saved from those panels. I suppose the only figure I can really refer to is that the projected carbon saving uh, um, over building regulations of which the minimum standard in the council policy is 35. Here we're projected to achieve 50. So they are um, coming in above the, the minimum standard required under, under policy H5. Uh, the next point, fire safety. Um, so there, is, there are fire safety uh, strategy elements included within the application. Perhaps these aren't referred to 
clearly enough within the report. Um, but we have got uh, some sprinklers proposed to the building. Um, there are uh, firefighting shafts, uh, venting of the lobbies, um, smoke ventilation as a fire hydrant identified within 90 meters of the entry point. Um, so I think the, these would have been factors that, um, you know, these are factors relevant um, here. And obviously the um, Berkshire Fire and Rescue rescue comments are noted and that would go through the, obviously the building regulations approval um, for the for the final sign off on those aspects. Uh, I think that was all the matters unless I've missed anything chair. Thank Councillor Emerson. Can I just get on the fire safety noted on the sprinklers I think that's positive was a second exit considered do you know as part of conversations with the applicant? Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I, can't, I don't know on that point. I'm sorry. Councillor Page. Chair, with respect, Matt, you, you didn't pick up the point that, that I raised. We are being invited to approve a plan that is inaccurate, that refers to a bin area for 138 flats, right? Um, that is, shows the total area for bins. If we agree this this evening with the condition that you're referring to, the developer will have every right to say the total area has been approved. It's what goes within that area uh, that they will then say, well, we can't accommodate any more bins. Your condition would not allow a redrawing of that um, basement plan. Um, so we have an, uh, a plan that shows for 138 flats that's probably far too small for 182 um, and would therefore not allow for uh, an appropriate expansion of area. That is the issue we need more information um, on because we're not dealing with the waste for 38 flats. We're dealing with the waste for 182 uh, flats and where the food waste um, gets accommodated in this, God alone knows. Um, the developer isn't interested in that side. If they can get away with having all the food waste tipped into the landfill and that is what will happen and that is what we are effectively being asked to approve and that is unacceptable, Chair. Yeah, thank you. Yes, of course, the developer wants to give yeah, us an assurance okay. this yep. evening yep. that full okay. food waste will be accommodated and that that can be included, therefore, in the submission of the detailed um, strategy. OK, I'm sure that the full waste management plan will come up pre-commencement. That's correct. Yeah, so there, there's a reading the room. You can obviously tell that councillors, you know, have, have, have have their concerns. Sorry, Councillor Ronan. I do, I do have concerns, and I think that Councillor Page is entirely right about that that space there. Yeah. Um, there, there is no allocation. I mean, I count out the bins there, and that's that's the number right there. And there, so there would have to be additional room made. I mean, I, I didn't really want to bring it up because I feel like it's going excessively on but yeah. but there is also something coming on about uh, something called pops yeah. which is which is dealing with chairs and upholstered items and mattresses and all of that which are likely going to have to be sequestered into another area with the move in and move out of of the buildings in this in this center the fact that they're going to have to also probably figure out a space for constantly taking care of that and it's not going to be on our streets i can tell you that much um <laughs> Uh, I, I've got real concerns with that combined with, uh, I also mentioned, I don't think you got back unless I tuned out for two seconds about the, the under provision I see for cycle hire. I feel like this is very crowded here. I feel like it's very crowded here and I'm not getting the answers I want to make sure that this is going to be satisfactory and responsible to the town center. No, undoubted. You know, I feel that we, and I also feel that we're short of information on, on, you know, what's, what's going to happen. I was, I saw the representative over there putting his hand up, so I was going to offer him to the mic and see whether he could answer some questions. If not, I think we need to, we, we will have to ask for a deferral. But I just want to 
bring in. Yeah, yeah, but Richard wanted to comment first. Richard. Thank you, thank you, Chair. I mean, we've heard a, a, a number of things in in the uh, member discussion. Thank you for this. Um, uh, the one thing that I don't think we've discussed for a little bit was something that um, members brought up uh, very early on about the materials um, and the um, the concern about uh, the materials colouring and whether that was correct and and whatever. Um, we've got a condition there for the submit uh, for for materials to be submitted, but I don't think we've got the possibly the level of detail that, that I'm feeling that members want, which sounds like. Um, to see materials on site, to be able to look at the options and that kind of stuff. So I think that is, for a start, an area that, that we're going to need to go back to the developer and, and talk to them about. Um, the second issue, the refuse and, and, uh, and, and waste recycling. Um, obviously, food waste is, is a very, very difficult issue, especially in town centres. Um, uh, you know, waste smells, there's going to be quite a lot of it and it needs to go somewhere. We don't have the answers this evening on that, I'm afraid, and we're going to need to to, to go to go to go back to them on that. Um, I've heard the um, points about um, electric vehicle charging points, which seem to meet the standards for the for the full application. It's probably not too much we can do about that. The solar panels, we will we will uh, come back with some uh, additional clarification. Um, the the fire safety bit as well. Um, and come back further on the basement cycle store. On the basis of all those matters, and particularly in respect of the uh, materials and the um, food waste situation, I think we're going to have to ask you to def defer, committee, please. Right, OK. Um, I did want to say a few words on this myself, but OK, Coun Councillor Hornsby-Smith, and then I'd, I'd like to bring the, the representative in to yeah, answer some questions. Sure, it, it, it's, you, you may well be right in, in terms of, uh, Richard, in, in terms of saying that there's nothing we can do strictly to enforce a uh, higher provision of electric charging points, but it doesn't prevent us from asking the question, um, do, do the developers want something that is more future-proof than H5 when it was originally set up? Uh, envisages. So I, I think on on both those and the photovoltaic cells, which is which are the, the two issues that I raised, there's no harm in going back to the developers and saying, can you improve your offer there? That would be really helpful. It's not something that we can necessarily enforce, but it would be good if the if the uh, developers were aware that that would be something that we would desire if possible. Uh, thank you. And we also have to remember we've got item eight coming up, which is heavily linked. And I don't want to stand after not repeating ourselves of what we said in, in item seven. So if the representative from the, um, Zone Point would like to come forward and introduce yourself, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Hit, hit the button. Does that work? Hello. Hi, my name's Andrew Campbell. Uh, I'm the architect for Sone Point. Uh, I work for the company TP Bennett on behalf of Tenor Living. Um, there's Sorry, if I just pull the chair back for this, if, if councillors want to ask specific questions now, to to, or would you like to just do it from memory? What has been asked? I, if you if you're happy, I'll try and do it from memory, and then okay. please come back. Um, if, 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 if you feel you need more um, more response. Uh, it, first of all, in terms of the firefighting access, I think uh, I, I, I see a pack of information that's banded around, which I think is actually the NMA application documents. So that things like the basement plan is not from the planning application, it's from the NMA. So uh, there are in fact two firefighting uh, shafts within the building and there's a third fire escape core within the within the building. So there are actually three fire escape cores within the building, two of which are firefighting, all of which comply with um, we have a fire uh, a, a fire consultant on board and all of which comply with the uh, BS 9999 at the moment. Um, albeit we know that the regulations are changing um, and new regulations have come in as of last week. So uh, but um, they all comply with those regulations, uh, and as as um, as uh, Matthew said, it is a fully sprinkled building. Uh, th there is um, uh, ventilation to all of the uh, corridors and all the passages, so it does comply in, that in, in relation to the fire aspect of it. Uh, 
in relation to the waste, uh, I would say that there is on the planning application basement drawing, there are clearly indicated two significant areas of um, two significant areas, which are one, firstly for the uh, existing 144 unit scheme and secondly for the 38 additional flats. So there's two separate storage areas on the green plan that you have. That's for the non material amendment application. So actually there's there's on on the planning application drawing. There is uh, something like 180 square metres for the uh, PD element of it. And then there's further 50 square metres for the um, this. Um, I, I don't know uh, if 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 we can bring forward a, a drawing that shows the existing basement that may well help uh, clear that up, but that includes bulk waste that includes um, an area for recycling, which includes uh, a um, an area for um, recycling of food, food waste and yeah, so bulky waste uh, There's about 30 square meters for bulky waste because in a in a um, the management of this building, they know they're going to have significant numbers of deliveries, significant cardboard uh, recycling, significant big items that are coming through. And so there is significant storage for that bulky waste. Um, which is it, which is clearly shown on the on the on the planning application drawing. Well, well yeah, I, I can't reference that and um, it hasn't come in any of the report packs that I've, I've received. In fact, I couldn't. We blew the, the the pictures up, and I couldn't see any is, difference. Is, is that the, is that the drawing with the green on it? Yeah, I've got it here. And I've that's not for the planning application. And then that's that's the item eight on the agenda. Sorry, this is um, Samruti. Samruti Patel. The, um... But there's nothing that references in 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 the pack for seven anyway for item seven. Okay, Matt, could you clarify that? Uh, yeah, so the the plan, the green plan, the green plan that is there, that that is the basement plan for the NMA that relates to the prior approval consent. That isn't the basement layouts for the planning application. Okay, that's the plan for the application basement, not in the pack that was on that was on the plan. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, but that's for the, which one's that for? This which is, is for the it? application we're discussing at the moment. Right. So you've got bulky waste near the cypress and another refuse thing. Let me just see if I can tell where So it is. are you saying, sorry. No, carry on, Councillor. Are you saying that the waste area for the 38 flats is entirely separate to the 138 that's shown or the 144? Because if that is the case, it's not. Thank you, George. Um, and that is the confusion, and that is what the clar clarity want. I find it inconceivable to believe that you're going to be operating a separate area for 38 flats. Sorry, on the drawings, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show you, but. The, um, there are two areas uh, of uh, refuse for the combined 144 unit scheme and the 38 additional flats uh, or, or actually 27 additional private flats. So that's all in an area up in this uh, top left hand corner, which is about 150 square meters. It's a huge amount of recycling. Uh, and then there's a, a separate store of a, a um, down to the bottom left hand corner, which is for the affordable units because that will be operated separately. The two uh, spaces to the to the top left will be operated by uh, the same management company. I think we need to, this is I think we need from it's yeah, potentially I mean, very helpful, I have to yeah, say, but yeah, yeah, it sounds very favorable, but in the report pack which came to us and more importantly goes to the public on on, on, on the thing, I think this is important that this information it is is cleared up um, and we, we get clarification on these on on these points uh councillor Rowland. yeah i mean it, it 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 is indeed potentially 
very, very helpful. However, you're still talking about food refuse, which Reading Borough Council will be collecting that would be in a different location within the building or something to food waste from the other 144 units. And so I suppose that magically that's all going to come together and be in one location and everything. There's, there's a, it's really kind of confusing. And, and is there extra cycle provision on this plan that? Yes, if you look at the plan, sorry. Uh, sorry, yeah, in, in the plan, in the top hand corner, there's um, uh, adequate cycle provision for the 144 unit permitted development scheme and for the 38 additional apartments. OK, so. All right, my glasses on. Thank you. OK, uh, Joe, I'm trying to show you. Um, yeah, you, no, just about visible on this. You try going onto the website and looking at those plans. Sorry, that's a but whether it's on the website, it should have been in the report pack. No, right. yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's yeah. uh, uh, Councillor Rowland, can I just come in with Councillor Yeah? Um, yeah, I was just going to say, so councillors clearly haven't had a chance to see this. That's my understanding because I don't remember seeing any of this. So can we not just defer this? Um, instead of discussing it backwards and forth like this, where we can't, we're, we're then being asked to make a decision right now on something we haven't had a chance to, to think about. No, yes, I'm in agreement on that. We were probably going to come to the same point reading really, the room, but it's just, uh, it doesn't, it, it still doesn't hurt to sort of like still, if there's more questions that we want to raise tonight before we, before we come back again. I mean, um, yeah, okay. But if it's coming back, then I think we'll draw a line under it and yeah. ask for a deferral. But the and information we've had sounds encouraging. We need to see that in writing. Yeah, I mean, in, in print, it, no. I'll say now, in principle, I'm, I'm in, fa I'm in, fa I'm in favour of, of the development. I think it's good. You know, it, fit, it fits in with the affordable housing. There's obviously issues around waste management. On the um, um, materials thing, I think in 75 years' time, they will come back and ask our time why we stuck things all over the outside of buildings. I also think that brutalist architecture can be a benefit of um, conservation and heritage doesn't always have to be beautiful. You know, I think some of the 1960s stuff is good. Um, I take uh, Councillor Rowland's point about um, they've used it just in building as an integral part of, of the development, which which I think is a positive. Um, with the build to rent schemes, there's just my, my, my other hat on, so to speak. A lot of build to rent schemes that are coming to the town and they're no doubt going to be a thing in the future. Hopefully permit development won't be as much as we can see what can happen. Um, when we talk about being in line with uh, Reading Borough Council's aspiration of affordable housing, there's two elements to it. It's not just about rent levels. It's about length of tenancy. tenancy. It's about security. It's about allowing families to put roots down. And to that, you need length of tenure. That's just a comment. I know it's not relevant to this application, but it's something that's important to me. Um, the other thing is, and I will make one more comment if we get told off for this, and I know it's coming back. But um, we said that in, in, in your presentation that you sent us, nice, nice little presentation, by the way. There was, a, there was a point in there that we will create beautiful roof gardens and beautiful roof terraces. And then I saw a condition in the thing. I know a lot of councillors aren't going to agree with this, but I do. If we're going to make this a great place for the people that live there, eventually, if it goes ahead, that live there, why shouldn't they have access to their roof gardens between 11 at night and 8 in the morning? You can put stuff in the lease that says you, you can't play loud music, but it'd be all right to have a can of beer and a, and a thing on your, on your thing. Anyway, that's just about the people that are going to live there and obviously be paying to, to live there. So they should get the they should get, or even have a fag on their roof terrace. They are, if we don't ban it under a Labour government, which they say that we're going to do. Anyway, anyway, roll on. And I'd also like to clarify the point that Tony Pace said about appeals. I have the greatest faith as chair of PAC in the appeal process. And of course, we um, stand by the, the appeals process. Right, OK. I believe in Whoa, OK, right. So um, we defer that so we agree to defer this yeah. sorry yeah. noted and uh so was it um 
EV charging points. Yeah. Would you like us to know? I think it was six items in total I had. Was it? Chair. Do you, do you want me to run through them again, just yes, so we're clear? Please, I, <coughs> I had materials, refuse, EV charging, solar panels, fire, fire strategy, and then basement cycle store. Okay. That was number two. Oh, was it? OK, right, so. That was, so, that, so. That was number six. Okay. So do we agree this is now going to be deferred with those points to be referenced? Everybody? OK, agreed. OK. Yeah. I, I, OK, yeah. We are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for your input. Very valuable. Good job you turned up in the end, wasn't it? No, it's good. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you might as well stay there for the next one, didn't you? Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Mm. Right, boss is done. Um, so we finished item seven and move on to item eight, which I believe is um, Matt again. Yeah, thanks, Chair. This is item eight. It's on page 93, the main agenda pack. Uh, there's also an update on page 15 of the update pack. Uh, the application seeks non-material amendments to the prior Ooh. approval consent referred to under the previous agenda item at some point. Uh, for conversion of the upper floors of the buildings from offices to 144 studio flats using permitted development rights. Uh, the application proposes various internal amendments to the layout of the flats. As outlined within the main agenda report, officers consider the proposed changes are non-material in nature. Uh, ultimately, if the amended plans have been put forward at the time of the original decision for prior approval, um, then the change of use prior approval for the change of use would still have been given. Uh, the officer recommendations to agree the proposed changes as non-material amendments for the reasons set out within the main agenda and the update report. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, any any councillors? Councillor Page. Um, Chair, I, um, I clearly we've deferred the previous item and uh, will return to those issues at the next meeting. I would just like to draw to attention uh, of colleagues um, the letter that was submitted with the non-material amendment um, application. It, it's not in the pack, but it is worth just giving a few examples as to, and this highlights the gross uh, deficiencies of the prior approval process and the fact that councils will be saddled um, with substandard uh, accommodation. Um, the amendments that we are um, got before us this evening and on the whole are improvements really just underline the extent to which the original consent was unacceptable. Um, and I'm almost tempted to ask the applicant if they would, would have proceeded with the original consent. They're now going for are quite substantial um, changes. And let me just give you a couple of examples as to the benefits that they, the applicant, are uh, attributing to the changes that are required. The relocation of internal walls so that dwellings better relate to the location of existing window. That's the amendment proposed. The benefit, level of daylight and sunlight into dwellings is maximized. Outlook from dwellings is improved. Well, that's quite important. Relocation of internal walls so that dwellings are more functional for occupants, allows for more usable floor space within the proposed dwellings. So the rabbit hutches go from very minimal to slightly less uh, minimal. Um, and then we run, run on through the rationalising of the kitchens and bathrooms, which benefit reduced noise transfer between floors. The relocation of the kitchens to quotes, to provide more usable space within the dwellings. All of these are benefits. I'm not arguing with them, but these are benefits that just show how inadequate and how disgraceful is the prior approval regime that allows these to be even drawn up. We have no control over standards and quality, and that is the legacy of a Tory coalition government that pushed this through and I'll just remind Councillor Moore as I did Councillor Duveen regularly that the Lib Dems were as complicit in this disgraceful regime uh, as the Tories and that we are committed 
and the next government will hopefully remove this as soon as possible. That's not an argument against the NMA, it just further highlights the disgraceful nature of the prior approval uh, regime. And one serious question, can I just be assured that in approving these plans this evening, uh, we aren't um, going to then be told that the ground floor area has therefore been signed, sealed and delivered and amendments couldn't be made uh, in terms of the previous application and the discussion that we had about the uh, um, the waste area and the cycling area. It's the sort of, is that? That's right, no, it's, it, it won't. No. End of rant, Chair. Yeah, I, that was sailing quite close to the wind for a statement. Uh, the rights and wrongs on permitted permitted development as in. Anyway, um, Councillor, Councillor Rowland. Thank you, Chair, and I thank Councillor Page for making some really, uh, really good points um, in regards to this situation here. Um, the I've got a I've, I've got a rather practical question in regards to to this uh, to this site, uh, and it goes back, I guess, again to refuse. And I know that there have been changes to every floor and this and that, and so we do we are benefited by sufficient uh, floor plan layouts, and we can open them up on the on the screen and everything um, to see. But could you could I was wondering if the if the developer could answer for me how someone in the top floor um, on the fourth floor of this plan gets down to the refuse. What what is their journey actually um, in in doing that? And I suppose I could have asked that before too, but but the journey's down in the in the basement and there's no there's no there's stairwells and stuff like that but but i'm trying to figure out how motivated they're going to be by by the refuse uh, to to engage in refuse recycling and food recycling and all that if you could describe the journey of how someone gets from the third or fourth floor down to the basement it may again be far simpler than i see but yeah thank you uh, just, just to make a quick point, I'm, I'm happy as chair to chair this evening to use more discretion to allow the developer representative to um to answer these questions and for councillors to ask. But you're under no obligation to if if if, if you don't wish to, okay? <laughs> Not guilty, my lad. Right, uh, councillor Emerson. Yeah, thank you, chair. Just to add to what councillor Page said, you know, just in terms of fire safety, again, the letter on the portal, which was not part of the uh, officer report, notes again the intention to change by way of these plans to fit building regulations. So that's welcomed in this case. Um, and again, it would have just been helpful to have had that in the officer report. Um, but, you know, for me, these plans are an enhancement and I associate my um, opinion with what Councillor Page said in terms of permitted development. Yeah, exactly. I, th I think I think to be fair, there's a relationship between the two applications, but they still have to be dealt with as separate. So in which case it wasn't re it wasn't really relevant to have that in in the report. So and then we were guilty of reading both reports, putting two to two together and getting our. our Ag agree with you, Chair. Well, I've, I can just come back. I would just say that I think we see very comprehensive reports tracked to this committee, but for me reading this one on this item, I struggled to actually understand what was changing. I know that um, yeah. bullet points were noted, but I had to go onto the portal more so than usual to try and establish. And of mm. course, that's where we find the letter that actually says what's changing and why, and it's because the previous plan was not good enough. Yeah, I'm in agreement. I mean, there was a few magnifying glasses out this this, this week, wasn't there? So, and. Um, OK, um, did you want to uh, respond to any of those points? Sorry, I think that mic's not working. Um, so I'm Samrita Patel, I'm the planning agent um, acting on behalf of the developer. Um, so in, just in terms of your question regarding the journey from uh, one of the upper floors down to the lower ground floor. So they'd effectively use the core, which has either got lifts or the stair core, and go straight down to the lower ground floor 
where there is a door that enters into the car parking area where the refuse uh, and recycling storage area is located. Oh, sorry. Uh, Councillor Rowland. Thank you. If if I could just come back for a clarification on that, what do you mean by the core? You to, you. The core, so the stair core and the lift core, um, which which go, runs all the way through the building. Right. You you'd take the effectively the lift down to the lower ground floor, and then walk through the corridor to the car parking area where the refuse store is located. That being the core. Okay, and it's by stair. Uh, Sorry, there's, there's also no. lifts. That's a stair core then? Yeah, that's my understanding, you? is that what you said? Well, uh, there's a core which has lifts and stairs, Stair. so you could take either down to the lower ground floor. Okay. Is this referencing back you, to your, your shoot that you were talking? No, thank you, Chair. I'll just sit down here and look at this a little bit more. Okay, thank okay. you. Any other points that need clarifying? Silence. No. Okay. Are we... Um, Happy to move on to a decision on this one, then. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we support the recommended actions? Agreed. I. Yeah, I just picked it up in the recommended actions. And I also made reference to this being item nine, and of course it's item eight. Apologies. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So. Hi. Right, and. Nine. Yeah, now we do move on to item item nine, which is, of course, um, our, our flats in what used to be my ward, but is now church ward. OK. Um, Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, that application by the council uh, for replacement of all existing windows, roof lights and balcony doors at 383 to 387 Northumberland Avenue, which comprise three council owned blocks of flats. Um, replaces all existing uh, windows, doors and roof lights with higher thermal performance plastic windows, doors and roof lights, improving their visual appearance, thermal performance and safety. Uh, officers consider these make a positive contribution to the buildings, visually and functionally, it will not be harmful to the character and appearance of the area. Um, it would also improve the living conditions for the residents of the flats, and as such it's recommended for approval, sort of condition to set out in the main report. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Hornsby-Smith. Yep, as the ward councillor, I'm delighted at this application. It's part of the council's overall uh, programme of upgrading our, our, our houses and flats, and I, I, I very much welcome it. It's part of our climate change agenda. Uh, it, as you, as uh, Mr Vega said, it, it will improve the living conditions of people who, who live in the flats, uh, replacing the windows, upgrading them, making them more uh, thermally effective. Um, and all of those, and, and just generally improving the, the layout of those flats uh, because because they are looking a little bit uh, down at down at heel at the moment. So this investment is is very welcome. I very much welcome the report, and it's good for good for climate change agenda as well. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Um, no nobody else. Um, yeah, well, I'm as it's part of my award, I will say. I'm well pleased with it. Could do with a bit of a could do with a bit of a facelift. You know, it's um, flats with um, nice views and stuff. And um, yeah, exactly. Oh, no, I think the ball started rolling when we were, in fact, the councillors. So. <laughs> okay. Um, should we? Yeah. Okay. We we'll move recommended action to grant. Aye. Uh, right, thank you. All right. Um, thank you all. Thank you, chair. Yeah, it was, it was good. Thank you, Matt. It was quite a detailed one for you tonight. It was, um, yeah. But I'm almost, almost paid to bring him to separate packs, wouldn't it? <laughs> mm, thank you.